stop running from the potential of what you can be, guys. It's inside of you. It's always been there. Grab a buddy of yours. Say, man, me and you are gonna fucking do this together. And you're gonna be on my ass if I start slacking. I'm gonna be on your ass if I start slacking. And I'll never accept mediocre again. I'm always gonna give it my 110 fucking percent. That's the only thing I can ever say a solid day's work. That's all that will ever find peace in. If you guys do not do that, I promise you, your life will haunt you for the rest of your days. If there's potential inside of you, which you know it's there, but you're too scared to tell anyone else about it, and you go on and on, get older and older and older and older, and the windows of opportunity start to close, and you knew it could have been given birth to, but you never did it, I promise you, it will haunt you. It'll be more, it's a living nightmare, dude. That fact that you have the ability to do something and you're too weak to fucking turn the key and start the engine on it is a greater disappointment and a greater burden to carry than any of this physical sweat equity or pain in the gym or, or, or sacrifice. All that is just nothing compared to a life where you're burdened by regret, guy. Two forms of pain. Pain that breaks you and the pain that changes you. That's the pain of a change right there. That's the pain of progress. The pain that destroys you isn't this shit. It's later in life knowing you could have been more and all that's left is you and the fucking mirror and tears of a possibility left that you allow to die. Own your fucking life, guys. You have every opportunity. There's no excuse not to be the hardest motherfucking worker in the room. In all your endeavors, schoolwork, the gym, your career, your relationship, your name's attached to it. It's got to mean more than anything. The kid inside of you, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever age you are, when you were a kid, big dreams, big aspirations, anything's possible, every window's wide open to you. Have you let that shut? Or do you still believe it? If you now as an adult turn back to the kid at eight years old, the same person, is that kid proud of you? Is that kid saying, that's who I want to be? If not, open your eyes and fix the motherfucker. Stop fucking going about the day as a servant. Become the master, run your day and stop having it run you. Believe in yourself. Be that one of a hundred that has a belief instead of just fucking jaw jet talk of intent. There is no fundamental like secret here. It's called hard work and sweat. If you have that and you're willing to provide that in exchange for a better life, well, everyone will make that deal with you. If you're willing to give up that for pride, accomplishment, feeling of self-worth, if you're willing to make that transaction, Miami Fitness is your bank. And it's open every single day for your transactions. Make your deposits every fucking day. Pay your dues. I'm the person you want to be. It's the easiest fucking equation in the world. That's a good life. That's the life you remember. That's the life I want you to live. You can't be scared to die for the truth. The truth is the only thing that's ever going to be constant. I was blessed to be around a very competitive family that supported me and loved me, you know, so I was, I, that's where it all started. And then the military tested it, you know, and so I became battle tested there. And then in the in sports arena, I got tested further, you know. And I failed a million times. I just kept getting up and kept getting up. You know, and so, you know, that's the greatest thing about success. If you win success right off the bat, you don't learn anything. Your real truth in learning is a failure. And when you go after an endeavor and you fall on your ass and you fail, and then you get back up and you reface it, and then you become successful, that's some sweet victory right there. That builds a confidence and un unyielding willpower that anything out there is within your control. So all these things in life, even the failures, create who you are today. You know, so therefore you can apply what you've learned in the past to make the best judgment in the future course of action.
To take that first step towards greatness is very hard. That's the hardest step of everything is that first step, right? That first step towards greatness is hard. What's a lot harder is when time expires in life and you look yeah, back yeah. on your life knowing you could have been great. Yeah. That's something you can't control yeah. anymore because time's run out. The person who's standing at the end with their hand raised isn't the person with all the genetics. It isn't the person with the most potential. It's the person that has the greatest perseverance. It's always willing to get out. The difference between a champion and a, and a loser is that the, you know, they both fail. It's that the loser allows the failure to stand for life. With a champion, even though he gets knocked on his ass, finds he does his fortitude to stand back up, reface that endeavor until it becomes his favorite, until he wins. That's the difference. Champions get back up and do it again. You know, they believe in themselves so much, and their belief overrides any crowd's disbelief. There's no quick fix to a long-term situation. And when it comes down to any endeavor, whatever's it, whatever it starts out, and then however it ends up, it's what's in your mind and how you see it. Whatever the truth is, your perception on how you see that truth outweighs it 10 to 1. So it's a motivation and why you're doing it. You know, it's, it, it, in the journey of getting in shape, it's a long, long run, right? It's not the dog in the fight that matters, it's the fight in the dog that matters. Same with you. It's not your genetics or your potential, it's how bad you want it. You can look like anything you want. If you, if you mentally believe it, your body will find a way to make it happen. But if you don't believe you can do it, don't even start the journey, it's too hard. I'd love to sit here and talk to you all day, Greg, because yeah. you know your physique's awesome, your passion, your that like, zest for life and drive, it's really inspiring. So hopefully the guys today watching, they've got some of that and they've got a little bit of Greg Flint's drive. You only live once, but if you work it right, once is enough, my friends. Genetic limitations. Do genetics play a role? Or is it just a lazy man's excuse for why they're not in shape? Genetics, what are we talking about here? The genetics. The genetics of somebody to build muscle mass. You are limited to your genetic structure, what you're born with. Does that matter? That's any one of your heroes. I guarantee you, if you listen to any of their interviews, you'll hear them say, practice makes perfect, that kind of mentality. That they fail in order to succeed. It's the belief that supremacy exists. There's so many examples in the Olympics, and every day we see the common man with the odds against them, overcoming what people thought could never happen. And probably he didn't even think it. But there he stands victorious and a role model to all of us. Like, oh my God, we want to be him. But before he was him, he was us. What got him there was an undying belief. And every drop of sweat that came out, and every pain and ache and everything else, was just a, a, a telltale sign and getting closer and closer to that dream that we were when we were kids of being a reality. Why not believe in it? What's the other option? There is no other option. It's a life forgotten, man. In the acting world, if I go to the audition, I have a fucking chance of getting the part. If I don't go to the audition, I'm out of the game. I know the outcome, nothing. Show up. Even if you get knocked on your ass, show up. At least you have a possibility, you have a chance. You have a voice of doing something with your fucking life. Believe that that supremacy exists. Believe it within you. Because every motherfucker that had ever achieved it had to believe it. When everyone else said it wasn't possible, they said it fucking was. And there they stand. Boom, did it, bitch. Your turn. This day it changes. Every day four is a better day. No longer are we going to accept rhymes and society's rhyme the reason that we are average. Average is a weak mentality. 
We must believe it so much so that we're arrogant about it. We must be pissed off for excellence. I want to put growth in the mindset of who you guys are, what you guys really want to be. That's where it all starts. This right here controls it all. This is just a fucking messenger. We get this right when we go into this workout, huge benefits, huge success. But it's the mindset, man. Everything starts with that. So here's a message, guys, I want you to think about as we go into this destruction of what you thought is all you can be. Whether well, you're a potential, whatever it can be, it's only going to go so far because you're only so good. We're going to destroy that like fucking Armageddon. Destroy that shit. What I want to fucking express right here is you're going through these sets. Man, you're feeling that burn, that pain. And you're at whatever rep, you know, is it seven, do I stop or is it, do I go to nine? I want you to think about this, guys. The eulogy of life. What are they going to say at your death, at your funeral? One of your friends or family member stands up and speaks on behalf of the life you live. What are they going to say? They're going to talk about character. They're going to talk about something of your ability to while living and still is alive in other people. What are you giving back? The legacy is what I'm talking about. That's what we're building here today. When you're fucking pushing everything else, yes, you have to walk through the mud to get to the higher ground. There is no path to easy street. It doesn't go through the fucking sewer. Think of that, guys. As we're going here and you're pushing it, you're pushing the pain out, and you're trying to get that rep, that's where it all matters, man. That eulogy is going to speak volumes, even though you won't be there. It's going to speak volumes in your behalf. That begins today, right now, what we do. This says it all. You will destroy the disbelief that you can only be so far. We're encouraging the unknown belief inside of you guys that everyone has. It just needs birth to. That belief is a wave, a tsunami that going over what you thought you only could be. And to epicness, so many people with far less talent than you, far less ability, and achieve far greater than you because they had the missing element belief. Armageddon today, we're destroying that belief. We're gonna get our life right now. We're gonna get that eulogy they're gonna speak. We don't live forever. Our legacy does. We're gonna make sure that's solid. That gave me some weird fucking looks and everything else. Fuck them. You think I even noticed that? You think I give a shit about it? You know, no, I'm here for my own reason. My belief, where I'm going. In here provides a betterment for me, a purpose for me being here. They don't exist. I don't alter my mission at hand. No one fucks with me. Because I don't allow them to. They don't pay my bills, that's why I don't give them any value. It's got to be that way. It's got to be unconditionally focused. You know, you're not in here embarrassed. You're not in here this. When I say commitment and belief has to be unparalleled, it's either you're in or you're out. What that means is that if you are in and you believe in yourself, no one can change that. The weak motherfuckers of the world are committed when, they, when, when everything's in a perfect setting. But as soon as things get hard, they start having doubts. And why are the doubts? Not because they're failing, because other people are saying stuff and they're giving value to these third party people as if they're gonna help them. No one's gonna help you. No one's ever gonna help you guys. You've gotta help yourself. And I hate to say this, you really can't trust anyone but yourself. And if you trust yourself and you bet on yourself, you never lose. But if you start to put someone else's efforts in the equation of success for your own individual path, you're gonna be sadly mistaken on what comes from that path. Bet on yourself, believe in yourself. Don't allow anyone else's opinion, voice, actions to dictate what's going on. Because the further and further and further along the path you go, and the closer and closer you get to the end goal, that result, you're gonna see more and more people start acting funny around you. Fucking this is your life, man. Fucking hit it with a fucking passion. Just win. 
How harder you train, the faster it comes. You start to understand that. You're willing to pay those payments of sacrifice and due diligence, sweat equity on a daily basis and get that down payment today because the future investment of tomorrow is so bright. No longer are you going to wake up the same person. You're changing the me from. You're becoming that person through payments of this shit, the sweat equity. You own that. No one's paid you a fucking thing. That's actually cost you money. The gym membership, time, and everything else. Investment. Once you've transformed your body, you found value in what you're doing every single day to create the instinct. You got lost and fixated on the mission at hand every day. And every day you did it, and did it, and did it, and did it. Never even looked for it. And one day you, you popped up for some air and looked, oh my god, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And fucking hey, there you are, standing in the mirror, people taking pictures of you and stuff. I'm gonna put you on covers and campaigns and all stuff. This money's coming in. Wow, you're like, holy shit, what happened? Because you stood for something. You had character. You walked what you talked. And here you stand, fat fucker, to now motherfucker of inspiration. That's who you are. That's making the most of the set, man. Making the most of the seconds and minutes, the hours and days of your lives, man. That's the heart of a champion right there. They never say it's the bicep of a champion, the ego of a champion. It's always the heart of the champion that matters. Because at the test of time, one of the most strenuous adversities of life is the heart and the head strong ability to keep the pulse going of belief when the body is shut down physically. Mentally, you survive and push through it. The heart of a champion. Not the fucking ego, not the goddamn bicep. The heart. Workout's done, you paid your fucking dues. You're that much closer to becoming that person you always knew you could be. I mean, isn't it about time you do that? Isn't it about time you become that person you knew you always could be? How do you do that? You break the fucking mold, guys. You get the fuck out of bed when it's cold, when it's early. You do something away from the normality of what you've been doing. That, 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 that's that psychotic behavior. Doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Doesn't work that way. You must switch up the mainframe. Switch it up if you want a different result, man. Why not try it, man? Shock the system. Start with an earthquake, man. What I mean by that is, yeah, get up at four in the fucking morning one day. Just one day. And go for a fucking run. Commit to one day. And see how you feel as you're jogging it back in around five or something. As your neighbor is still asleep. It's like, who the fuck? What are you... What happened to what happened to old Greg, man? This is a new who's this? That's right. The new motherfucker's here to stay. And get the fucking on my plan, or get the fuck out of my way. This is my fucking time!
outside right now before we start a fucking workout our minds ready our bodies ready we've done our little pussy stretching but you know our muscles are ready to do this stuff why are we out here because the world's fucking out here everyone else has these goals in life where they they hold them inside they don't let anyone know because they don't want anyone to have them accountable for that shit so what they do is they they, they, they say they're gonna do a change but they don't tell anybody and they kind of go about it in the event that going about is too tough that they can pass judgment on just themselves without having a third party's objective nature passing on that every fucking day as a bullshitter. Another member of the long fucking line of losers of this world where second place is good. And no matter what, they honk and cheer for you, they get behind you. Instead of being one of those, the, those subjective nature losers in life that beats you down because you're doing better than them and you're reminding them of their failures. And here we start. Get the mind right, the body will follow. Tell the world, get a goal, achievable goal. And then day by day by day, you start to do that goal to make it the reality, guys. It's not guesswork, it's a science of intensity. And if you don't have the intensity, don't fucking come in. The life we live, guys, is a differential of margins that's almost unmeasurable. What is successful and what is failure? The differential are so small. We're talking about seconds. We're talking about, you know, reps. We're talking about the finest echelon of measurement that will make or break someone's life to be successful at that moment. And once you have that moment successful, that gives a birth of a lifestyle that's unbeatable, second to none. But in order to have that first success, you must ensure yourself that you're giving it all you can today because the future we don't know, do we? We're training for that. And when I hear people say terms like good enough, it bothers me to an nth degree because they are saying something that is justified at the moment but not quantitative until a future endeavor of life. So therefore, they are passing judgment on now for a future event that they knew nothing about. They're bullshitters. Good enough, if you think about it. Good is a positive, enough is a negative. That's an oxymoron right there. It's hypocritical in its own sense. There is nothing that's ever good enough. The only thing that's enough is at the end of the day, the end hour, the final hour, whatever you're fucking going for, that your hand is raised victoriously. That's when you know it's enough. And you're in the gym right now to ensure that that event goes your way. And it will never go your way, guys. And you're saying today is good enough. If you never say good enough today, I promise you tomorrow will always be enough. Whenever good enough is enough, you can bet tomorrow you'll have enough. There are no shortcuts. You went to every fucking corner and made a left turn or a right turn, and then you went down the next path. Ensure that everything and the opportunity was presented, that you got the most out of each situation you could. If you come up short, you know it's not from your lack of effort. You got beat honestly, and that's fine. But you'll never look back on that event and say, fuck. If only, if only I did that. What if I did this? Too fucking late for that. Build a legacy, guys. Don't go after the title. Every single day, the small things in life hold value to. It's you doing them. And you should have value in yourself. When you value your name, your life will be remembered. How do you know you're on the right path? When the small things mean as much as the big things. And lifting those last couple reps mean as much to you as looking in the mirror and flexing. Or winning the competition. Because you know that those small things add up to that. And if you half-ass it here, you can't expect anything but the half-ass fucking accomplishment later.
that lie. And when you're down that path and all you're seeing is rejection and adversity and demise, how do you continue that path when the monkey on your back feels like a 500 pound gorilla weighing you down? How do you put one foot in front of the other, continue the journey and that endeavor of life and cross that finish line? Let me explain that. If your mouth is a window to your body and the nutrition that comes through your mouth enables your body to grow strong and have a capable fundamental structure of whatever you want to do physically, your eyes are the window to your soul of belief, inspiration, the willpower. And just like when you put something in your mouth and you chew it, it can either enhance the physique of yourself or be the demise depending on what you're eating. The same goes true with what you see. There's a visual diet out there that's good and bad. There's negative energy if you look at it and you focus on when you allow that to come in, there'd be a demise of your willpower. The demise of your self-confidence, what you can be and what you believe in. You focus on the negative so much, you start to believe that negative shit exists in you. That's a negative, unhealthy diet, visually. You must focus on the positive things in life. Allow them to see you on the, and you're going through your day, guys. There's a million of these examples out there. When you see them, stop yourself in the tracks. Give credit. Remember the name of that person that did something with a common man, overcame the odds and did the impossible. When you see that, take notice. And remember that, because you will use that later in your own journey when you're feeling fatigued and weak. That'll be the spark that keeps you going on that journey when that gorilla is on top of you to ensure you get through that finish. But having a sound diet physically and a sound diet visually, the ability and the power of what you believe in to be true. And then building the body of which can make anything that you want capable is only two thirds of the equation. There's one big missing element that Marcus is talking about here. There's no name for that element. Call it the X factor if you want. But the X factor must exist. Even if you have the healthiest physical diet and the healthiest visual diet, it's not enough. Those two are like a sailboat out at sea with no harbor to sail for. In that situation, the best wind is no wind because you don't know where you're going. That's the X factor, the want. What do you want in life? You have the physical body to do something. You have the mental capacity to believe in it. What the fuck do you want? And you want something that collides all three of them into the trifecta. It makes the uncommon man remembered for generations because he achieved the impossible and changed the basic framework, the blueprint society in which we live our life. The one is in us, that X factor is in every single one of us guys. It's a seed that's planted at birth inside of every single soul. 99% of the people never let that seed blossom into anything goes buried because they don't know how to nourish it. They don't know how to feed it, caress it, protect it. So it blossoms into the strength of remembrance to be a role model, an example of passion, strength. But pride is stronger than steel. That seed is not a genetic code. I mean, it's not like someone had a big seed, someone has a small seed. We all have the same seed. And it's the trials and tribulations through life that either make that seed blossom or not. How do we feed that seed? Well, there's a lot of different ways. Just like eating, there's good foods you can eat that make the body strong. Just like the, the visual nutrition that comes in is positive stories of people overcoming the odds. X factor. The nutrition content is two things, two recipes. One's fear, one's failure. They're the only two that grow it. Fear and failure. 
parking lot, Miami Fitness, man. Burbank, California. 6 a.m. right now, early. It's cold too, man. See, I like these conditions. Because if you can perform in these conditions, man, anything's easy. Especially when you're competition sleeping, you're out here working, it makes your desire solidify even more. Because success doesn't know these things about cold or early or tired. It just knows if you showed up or not. The difference between someone successful and someone that's not successful is not their ability. Because this world is filled with people who's never achieved their true ability. The differential is their desire. Workout's done, you paid your fucking dues. You're that much closer to becoming that person you always knew you could be. I mean, isn't it about time you do that? Isn't it about time you become that person you knew you always could be? How do you do that? You break the fucking mold, guys. You get the fuck out of bed when it's cold, when it's early. You do something away from the normality of what you've been doing. That's, that, that, that's, that's psychotic behavior. Doing the same thing, expecting a different result doesn't work that way. You must switch up the mainframe. Switch it up if you want a different result, man. Why not try it, man? Shock the system. Start with an earthquake, man. What I mean by that is, yeah, get up at four in the fucking morning one day. Just one day. And go for a fucking run. Commit to one day. And see how you feel as you're jogging it back in around five or something, as your neighbors are still asleep. Or as you're jogging it back in at six o'clock and your neighbor's just getting up, grabbing the coffee, looking outside, wondering, you know, what the day's gonna hold for them. Well, your day's already provided something for you. You see how that works? Mentally, you feel like, wow, man, that was fucking alive. And then you go about your day at work and your coworker is like, who the fuck, what are you, what happened to, what happened to old Greg, man? This is a new, who's this? That's right, the new motherfucker's here to stay. And get the fucking on my plan or get the fuck out of my way. That's how you run it, man. But you won't get to know what I'm talking about, man. You can't look at a picture of something of Hawaii and feel the cool breeze and the warm water. You gotta be there, man. You can't talk it all the time, you gotta walk it. Commit to one day, try it, see how it feels. Getting up that fucking early when everyone else is asleep or in sack cold. When everybody else says, no, this is not comfortable, we shouldn't do this. You say, yes, motherfucker, I'm gonna introduce myself to it. And who that person is, we don't know. Who could it be? It's exciting, man. Because the way you feel after that, as exhausted or as how you know, unpleasant as the experience might be, the after effect on how prideful you feel, man. Now that's something you're either going to love or not. And if you love it, dude, you're on your journey to something magical. Mission, we achieved that mission, guys. Don't get, don't, don't get so overloaded with the, with the temporary pain of the situation. Think past the pain to the pride that, that that pain it creates. You know, the pain in there felt equates literally to the peace and joy tomorrow. I know that sounds like, oh, you know, bro science and everything else, man. I don't even know what that fucking word means, bro science. I just hear it on these fucking, you know, you know, blogs and stuff or these forums that people write with these fucking keyboard rangers that have no other life so they sit there and fucking type away because they feel like they got some fucking set of nuts behind a keyboard. But in person or in life, they fucking these little hermit crabs going around and just hiding out and everything else because they don't have the intestinal fortitude to do anything but talk the talk behind a fucking computer. They can't walk shit, man. That's why they, that's why they had the fucking time to even comment on someone else's achievements out there. Fuck those motherfuckers, man. Don't be those guys. Come in here, man. You go in there and you fucking kill it. And when you kill it in there, man, you come out here, you, I don't give a shit what goes down. Part of your day is fucking a check, man. You did it right. And when you do it right once, it makes it easier the second time to do it right later in the day. It's, it, it's a wave of positive energy, man. Domino salt, man. We call it salt because you're assaulting an objective. That objective is the high ground of life that you want to get to. It's within your grasp. If you're willing to fucking give up that sweat equity, man. Come in there and sacrifice a little bit of pain for pride, man. If you're able to do that, man, on a daily basis, and you check the box and you pay your dues every single day, man, then that and anything else out here is within your grasp. That's when life becomes exciting. That's when you're fucking driving it, man. You're the master of your life. You're not the servant anymore. You are running the fucking day. The day is not running you. That's the, that's, that is, that is freedom, guys. Freedom. You gotta go in there first, man. The devil's den, you know. Pay your dues. You gotta, you know, face your fears to find that freedom, man. Greg put, that's watching. The Domino Salt, man. Go out and get your six pack. It's there for you. I had the greatest job in the world. It's a job where I get to put out what I do, what I love to do, and help to inspire people to do what they love and achieve things.
I just help them believe in themselves and to have a small impact in a better betterment of their life. Man, it just humbles me so much. And so that's why I think I have the greatest job in the world because uh, the return of investment, it's not a monetary value, but it's a value that, that builds legacy. Knock down, you get back up, and you get back up, and you get back up, and you continue to throw shit against the wall because you believe in the purpose, you find value in it. It's not guesswork, it's a science of intensity. And if you don't have the intensity, don't fucking come in here.